Hey, welcome back to the Unbeal Mind podcast. This is Mark Devine. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, you can watch this live in video at unbealmind.com or our YouTube channel. Many of you are probably listening on iTunes. That's where most of you find us. But anyways, as you know, I'm super humbled by your support. So hoo ya! Thank you very much. Um, before I introduce Dr. Laura Pence, Dr. L, the Spartan Mind Doc. There we go. Is that what we got? Yeah. Mind Doc? Chief. Okay. Chief. Chief Mind, mind doc. doc. Okay. So we got a lot of cool things because I'm the Chief Mind Doc of Unbeatable <clears throat> Mind. I love that. Yeah. We got it's a lot like in common. Double it mind in there. I like it. So we got a lot to talk about. But before, before we get into the details, the gnarly details of your life, um, I'm going to tell you one last time, maybe more, maybe I'll do it more than once, about our Unbeatable Mind Summit. Mm. <gasps> yes. So Very cool. November 29th to December 2nd, three days, we get into topics around mental toughness, resiliency, brain optimization. We've had crazy, you know, Ben Greenfield and, you know, world-class um, people on nutrition, like, um, oh my God, Rob, yeah, Rob Wolf, Mark Sisson, who's the uh, keto guy that we had, Dr. It's like the, anyways, it'll come to me. <laughs> Uh, yoga masters, um, all sorts of really interesting people. Amazing. We do a lot of unbeatable mind training. So we do, you know, functional fitness. Um, we get out and do our seal fit training on the beach in the ocean, a lot of mental toughness. Sounds we great. do our integrated yoga, breath work, meditation. And those participants will be, um, who come will be at a table with a, a new boat crew. And so the boat crew, they'll be in touch with all year long and they'll have an unbeatable mind coach. And so during the three days while we're doing all this other stuff, they'll also be getting coached and developing their uh, integrated five mountain training plan. That's physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, and Kokoro heart mind. So that 2019 can be a transformational year. Wow. So we focus on tribe, transformation, and traction, those three things. That's the Unbeatable Mind Summit. This is the last year we'll run it unless my team convinces me otherwise. But because we're shifting focus to more really immersive training, mm. uh, because we frankly do too many things as a small company. Mm. Which is, Seems to be we, a common have, trend like, in small the, companies. Chase the next shiny ball syndrome. At any rate, <laughs> if you'd like to come, there's a few slots left. I'd love to have you. And because you're listening and supporting this podcast, I'll give you $300 off. Go to summit.unbeelmind.com, summit.unbeelmind.com, and use the code POD300 at checkout, POD300. You want to come? I was just going to say, if you're on the podcast, do you get like $600 off? Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I'll let you I'm come. A, I'm a master negotiator here. <laughs> you are. <laughs> My goodness, you're good. I will you never, give you... You, you, never get a, you never get a yes if you don't ask, right? I talk to me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> California's a long way to go from Austin, though, I don't, or Dallas. 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 Yeah, you think make you can it. make your way all the way out there? Well, I, to me, honestly, I would love for my husband to go. Oh, yeah? That would be amazing. Does he need an unbeatable mind? He absolutely He's needs He's married him. to a mind doctor, and he needs yeah. an unbeatable mind. Well, don't we all? We do all. Yeah, we do all. Yeah. I mean, I probably still need to go. You know, I don't think I would be where I am today if I wasn't married to a therapist. Yeah? Oh, were you married I to a therapist? I kid you not. I'm, in, I'm married to a marriage family therapist. That's amazing. Who has her master? She doesn't have a PhD. She deliberately decided not to do that because she didn't want the debt. She was a single mom. Well, congrats to her. Yeah, no kidding. And so um, she paid her way through um, UCSD and, or SDSU, and then I forget where she got her, her master's, California School of Psychology or something like that. Or, that's amazing. That's not it, but it sounds something like that. One of those. But I, honestly, you know, it was, there's kind of like Mark Devine before Sandy. Pre and post. Yeah, and then there's a Mark Divine after Sandy. Yeah. I remember the very first inclination that maybe things would change when I said, um, you know, there's this bar in Coronado called um, McPee's, which is like the Navy SEAL hangout. So I'm a, I was an active duty Navy SEAL when right. I met her. And I'm like, hey, Sandy, you want to go to McPee's with me? She's like, no. no. <laughs> Smart lady. And my, I'm going through, my head is going like, oh, hmm. It's the first girl. I've met who said no to that. There you go. Which told me she was a little bit different yeah. than some of those other girls that I met over there. You can't we used ever to call have them a firm. frog hogs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ever have a firm yes unless you have a first a firm no. Right. Mm -hmm. So I collected my first no. And then I had the you know, the 
huge insight to say, okay, well, um, maybe I won't go. We'll just stay home and do something else. I like that. Because it did cross my mind that I would just go without her. Well, of That's course it That's how ridiculous I was back mm-hmm. then. You know? mm-hmm. At any rate, this show isn't about me. What am I talking about? I like to think that my, maybe my husband is a pre and post for me. Yeah? Are you a work in progress? Well, we all are. But I definitely am. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Every day. So you are a clinical psychologist. I am. So doctor, PhD, piled higher and deeper. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. <laughs> lots and lots of learning there. I love that. Yeah. Was it relevant to your actual practice and how you help people, the PhD? I mean, besides qualifying you to actually do it. Yeah. Do you rely on that learning a lot? Like you the know, academic side of it? Not as much as I think the academic institutions would like to think. think. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, I, I, I do, you know, I meet so many people that don't have a doctorate or don't have a master's that that are doing unbelievable and amazing things. And, and, and so, I mean, I think, I think what it really, there's a few things that I think you know, having a doctorate degree gave me. Um, and really the first was credibility with other people who cared, right. you know, about that. Um, and there are people who do, and there are people who should certainly, mm-hmm. I mean, because that education and that knowledge and the wisdom that you gain from well, going to graduate school for a few years is really, really important and key. But I think, you know, now I'm, I'm 12 going on 13 years out. Um, and I would say that now much more my practice relies on, intuition right. um, and skills that I've gained from experience, not that I gained from a classroom. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, classroom learning is just so limited. It is, and it can lock you in a, in a pattern of thinking. Yeah. Right, I mean, I went to models. a fantastic program um, that was really clinically based. So, you know, I knew I didn't want to be a researcher. I knew that I didn't want to be sitting behind a computer or interviewing people for data. Um, I wanted to be sitting with people listening. Right. Um, so I knew, so I picked a program based off of that. Um, and it was a great program. It was, it was clinical and, you know, know from our third month in at school we were um we were doing the work i mean we were sitting with clients clients. yeah so by the time i got out i had nearly already four years of experience under my belt so what do you have like a specialty then so you know for a long time it wasn't until maybe even the last year or so i've kind of branched out into into a more general practice but for a long time actually i worked significantly with eating disorders really yeah Interesting. um so individuals who were struggling with anorexia or mm-hmm. bulimia or binge eating disorder um people who had exercise addiction um and then you know out of just sort of a clinical diagnosis individuals that really were struggling in their relationship with food you know they were yo-yo dieting all the time and couldn't figure out how to make things work mm-hmm. or um, just generally unhappy with their body. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I had a pretty... I had a bunch of those people at my CrossFit gym. I'm sure. For years. I could, I could point them out. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. That he person is needs some binge help. eating and then running eight miles. Exactly. Right. And that's an addiction. Yeah. Huge. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Big time. So, um, recently I've, you know, I've kind of started branching out a little bit more, um, into other areas, but that was... Um, that's where I stayed for a long t- for a long time, and I think still in Dallas, that's sort of what um, what I'm more known for specifically. And I like the work, but it's it's really hard work. You know, eating disorders actually have the highest um, mortality rate of any mental illness. Are you serious? Yes. Mortality rate. I thought you yes. were going to say recidivism. Recidivism. No. How do you say that word? Recidivism. Recidivism. I know it's that's a hard a tough one, one, right? Man. Yeah. Especially for Super a guy like me. Cal- <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. So probably both, but mortality. Oh my gosh. Yeah, mortality. So, um, so you know, I've had clients pass oh. away. A lot. You know, there's a there's a high suicide rate among individuals with, e- with eating disorders. A significant um, comorbidity with trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, So the work is really heavy. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of people kind of joke about it when I tell people that I work with eating disorders and they, you know, grab my shoulder and they're like, oh, I need to see you. Does the disorder come from trauma and abuse or is it something that evolves from something else? It's so many things, right? I mean, you know, so often we sort of use use the metaphor of a perfect storm. You know, Mm -hmm. we're learning a lot more that um, that there's a big genetic piece to it. Um, Really? Yeah. An epigenetic piece? Yeah. Familial. 
passed down. That's exactly right. Yeah. Whoa. Um, familial. I mean, we know it's psychosocial, right? right I mean, there's so much out there today in terms of, you know, just misinformation and miseducation. A lot about of people food. think it comes from the, the, the cultural drive to push people to be perfect. Right. You know, and there's a piece of that. Mm-hmm. There's definitely a piece of that. Um, but but it is but it's a lot more than that. I mean, yeah. there's so much in right. there. So really, like any disorder, like depression or anxiety. But um, it's been, I mean, it's been fascinating to work. Yeah, I've loved the work because so many of the individuals that I work with are are so creative and so brilliant um, mm-hmm. and so beautiful inside and out that sure. they just they can't see it. So you know, helping them to get to a place where they can is rewarding. To find that, what is. Like, have you found there's any particular technique or process that you use that helps people break through and to see their own goodness? Yeah, so I think... um, What works for you, I guess. Yeah, it's a a great question. Shame is so pervasive. I mean, shame is so pervasive in my office regardless of the diagnosis and regardless of why people are coming in. I mean, shame is so pervasive in our society right now, right? Sort of this idea that we're not good enough or we're not worthy. Um... So I think a lot of it is building shame resilience. So Mm -hmm. um, working with individuals to build Mm -hmm. self-compassion and empathy um, to shift perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, Joe, you know, with Spartan talks a lot about frame of reference. So really kind of shifting and looking at things from a different way. Um, But I feel like for me, a lot of the technique really just comes in listening and then challenging. Um, you know, I say to a lot of people, and I know it's a horrible business model, but if I could work myself out of a job, I would sure. love nothing more. Yeah. Um, but in order to work myself out of a job, I have to challenge my clients. I don't like it when they get comfortable. Um, and when they come in and they say, you know, I love coming to therapy, I feel like we have a problem. Yeah, right. Maybe <laughs> you they're know? addicted to the therapy now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that I've created a safe, or helped, you know, create a safe place where they can come and feel you know, like they can explore things that are difficult for them, but I also want them to be really uncomfortable. I want them to, to, to step into emotions that are uncomfortable, to step into the stories they tell themselves that are uncomfortable, because that's where the change happens. I mean, that's right. where the growth is. So, um, so for me, you know, I think I tell my clients that I'm a direct therapist. They're, so if they're looking for somebody who's just kind of going to sit back and say, Let "Well, how talk, tell yeah. me how it feels," you know, that's not. That's not my jam. I like to get in there and be like, okay, we got to, we got to fix this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that. We, um, I had a CrossFit gym for a while and I've never really considered myself a fitness trainer. In fact, I'm not, although I'm a good one. Yeah. And I worked myself out of a job there too, deliberately. That's great. I love that. But it took me too long. It took me 10 years to finally fire everyone and close the gym. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was just a mechanism to get people in, to get them into the training and the transformation that I really wanted them to do, which exactly. is I've done through Seal Fit and Unbeal Mind. Yeah, that's fantastic. So when you close your practice, you'll know you've succeeded. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I know you've succeeded in a lot of other ways, too. I'm just saying. No, Isn't absolutely. Isn't that interesting? That yeah. means, you, okay, good. Now it's time for hand the baton to somebody else. And right. Maybe help them in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think so much of my goal, you know, and what I tell my clients sometimes is, you know, you, you haven't quite yet developed an internal coach. And so you can borrow me for a little bit, you right. know, when like you're that. at home and you're struggling with something that's difficult, ask yourself, well, what would Dr. Pence do? Um, but eventually... Dr. Pence becomes substituted. Well, what would I do next? Like, right. what would the best version of me do next? I love so, that. Um, so really, sort of, you know, you can borrow me for a little bit, but then I need you to use yourself, and that's how you get out of my office. And then that's how, you know, your enthusiasm towards yourself and investment in yourself becomes contagious, and you spread it with the world. I mentioned earlier around the summit that one of our tenants, our, our my whole philosophy, built around integration. Yeah. Integrating the physical, the mental, the emotional, yep. so you can open up to the intuitive and then ground yourself in a more, you know, spiritually grounded willpower, you know, living your purpose, yeah, living your dharma kind of thing. So those are the five mountains. And the emotional mountain has, you know, we've attacked it a number of different ways. One is through, like, scary challenges, facing fears. Another is through meditation and breath work and really just opening up to the sensitivity of what you're actually feeling mm-hmm. and identifying the feelings mm-hmm. and then beginning to work with that. And in that vein, um, to, to take something that you're experiencing and objectifying it mm-hmm. so that you can name it mm-hmm. and separate yourself from the story. Yeah, I love that. 
and then to be able to relate to it again as an individual with greater understanding. Yes. Which sounds to me like what you're doing with your clients, but you're saying, let me be the objectifier. Let me be the representation of, hey, you know, this is what you're doing or this is what that emotion is. Right. And so you're giving people a mental representation of a, like an image, an, you know, imagined coach or yep. therapist That's exactly who can right. objectify the thing that they're dealing with so they can get a greater understanding and then they can integrate it. Yeah, I love Something that. Something like that. Happening? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I love what you're saying in the sense that like I, I feel like part of what is so toxic um, about the way that we can become enmeshed with some yeah. of our stories and yeah, people identify themselves as that. Ex- 100%. They can't get away. They think I'm a shameful person because I've exactly been shamed. That's right. right. I, I was just saying yesterday that there's such a big difference even between using the language I'm a failure and I failed that obstacle. Absolutely. I mean yep. it's you have to you have to separate self from behavior. Right. Um, and and so, yeah, I mean, I think in my office, you know, I often talk about my office as a container. Um, and, you know, it's a container in which there's safety, um, but there's encouragement towards challenge. There's an opportunity in the obstacles. Right. Um, you know, there's empathy, there's compassion, there's lots of things in this container. But, um, but I think one of the purposes of the container is to really give yourself permission and practice what it's like to become separated you know what Mm -hmm. it's like to separate story from self what it's like to separate behavior from self disorder from self um so you know that happens a lot in my office and and growing an internal coach is such a big part of that yeah um i mean i think it's I think it's so key that we we have a voice inside of us that's even sort of separate from our own primal voice mm-hmm. that that allows us to just like pause and take perspective and kind of check in and with whatever it is. Some people call it call it a wise mind, you know. We call it the witness. Oh, you witness do. Yourself, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So you wanted to basically ground yourself in your witness. So you're always watching the thoughts and emotions. Yes. And you can, can identify the dysfunctional ones and yes. work on the dysfunctional mental and emotional movement patterns just like you would at a gym. Work on the dysfunctional physical movement patterns. Absolutely. That's but great. A t- witness. I love that. It takes time to find your witness. It does. Right? And yeah. so a good therapist can help someone find their witness. <clears throat> um, I imagine there's moments of silence and other tools like meditation practices that you use what what has been really helpful for you to find someone who's completely merged or to help someone who's completely merged in their story yeah to begin to separate from that yeah How's the, so you know actually that? i'm gonna i'm gonna give you an answer that maybe <laughs> is maybe sort of odd um we like odd. i actually f- think humor is really helpful yeah, I like um uh, you know it's people's problems are not Jokes. I mean, they're not something to laugh at. Get someone to laugh at themselves. That, but yeah, but I think that sometimes the entrenchment and the enmeshment um, is 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 an opportunity, you know, to sort of take perspective. And it's almost like, do can you can you see how kind of silly that is, you know, or can you see kind of just even how how wild it is that you're doing that? I mean. Um, I'm a little, sar- well, no, I'm a lot sarcastic actually with my clients sometimes. And I warn them that I warn them, them about that on the very first session. Right. You know, I if say, it's not okay with them. They're probably, that's in the wrong exactly place, right. right. Yep. If you're not willing to play the game, then this is definitely not the office for you, but I can tell you that it's going to be helpful. Um, because when we laugh, it's healing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we know that, but the other thing that laughter does is it gives us sort of pause for reflection. Um, so, la- and laughter changes your breathing patterns Absolutely. and it stimulates positive positive, you know, release of, of like oxytocin and neurochemicals yes, and stuff absolutely. like that. Absolutely. There's a lot going on when yeah. you laugh and smile and absolutely. especially uncontrollably. Yeah. And I think in, um, I think in therapy. That's why laughing yoga is so effective. Oh, I love it's that. It's a tool that we've actually, actually used. Really? Jeff's participated in the man behind the camera. That's amazing. It's hilarious. Actually. That's it's fantastic. really fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, and therapy, you know. I think people have this vision, and and it is like this, certainly a lot, where it's, you know, heavy and there's a lot of kind of negative negative space. I don't mean negative, like negative and positive, but just sort of clear. Exactly, right. Um, But I think, you know, too, if you can sort of get creative in the way in which the energy in the space 
um, is just sort of transforming somebody. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that that's that's great, especially when you, especially when you can surprise people. I mean, when somebody can somebody comes into therapy, sort of expecting that you know, for example, talking about old wounds from a parent is going to get really heavy and tearful, mm-hmm. and we spend part of the time laughing. You mm-hmm. know, I think mm-hmm. that that is. It's unexpected to them, but I think it's also an opportunity for them to say, like, well, okay, well, maybe this doesn't have to bind me so much as I thought it did. Like, maybe I can release yeah. myself. Why do you think that tears can so easily lead to laughter? Because that's the interesting one thing I've noticed. Yeah. Like, you can be in the most, like, desperate fit of, like, emotion. Yes. And then suddenly be in a fit of laughter. It's because it's, everything is so raw, maybe. It's so or great, yeah. You're so I don't, present. Yeah, maybe my, my, I guess, I don't know the answer to that, but it's, it is so, I think, I almost think of like physical vulnerability, right? right. That like, you know, I say to my kids all the time when. Just every, they've laid everything on the table. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, just sort cool. of like un, unloaded. I mean, really crying is just a release of energy, right? right? And in so many ways, that's also what laughter is as well. But um, so maybe you're just sort of operating on the same kind of physical yeah, wave. It's a like. total release of energy and suddenly change the story yes. around that energy. Yes. In one moment, it's just this desperate release of Bingo. sadness or right. whatever. And the very next moment, because you have, you've inserted some perspective, maybe, yeah, yeah. or it some word, or you just start laughing, Yeah. you know, and all of a sudden, boom, they're just like, oh my God. Yes. It changes to laughter. Yeah, I mean, the story around what that energy means. That's exactly right. Exactly around what it means. Um, And again, I think it's that 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 separation. Essentially, what an emotion is. It's just a. It's a trapped feeling, or it's a felt state that we have associated some meaning with, some cognitive belief. Yeah. And that then we we entrain that, or we grind that into our subconscious. And so every time you feel that, right, all of a sudden you say, "Well, I'm having the emotion of blank." Right. But that meaning is really just your meaning. Because that same feeling to me might be joy or That's bliss. That's exactly right. Or determination. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, if you think of pain, for example, like, you know, for pain for some people can, can feel so heavy and so um, in, so um, assimilated with difficulty or struggle. Right. Um, but, but pain for other people can be such an opportunity for growth. They see it yeah. as that, you like, know, they're aha. like, I'm almost there. Here Perseverance, endurance. Exactly. Right. Um, I love that. so yeah, I mean, I think emotions are very, very much the same way. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we, and we do, we attach a lot of judgment to emotions, for sure. you know, yeah. we attach tons of judgment to anger. Um, I think we even attach a lot of judgment to joy. You know, I think For sure. sometimes yeah. when, you know, individuals, especially in this society where we're so attached to productivity and we're so attached to exhaustion, um, joy yeah, can we almost, almost glor- glorify, yeah. you know, pain with or associate pain with productivity. Yeah, absolutely. Or pain with accomplishment. Right. As opposed to like, woohoo. That's exactly right. Good job. Yeah. Move and on. so when we do that, right? Like because of that, if we have that judgment and we experience joy from something, like the 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 length to which we can experience it is limited because if we have that judgment around it, like yeah, oh snap well, back into reality. Yeah, exactly. Get, get grounded again. Exactly. I wonder if that comes from our Puritan ethic, you know, that that just has underpinned Western culture. Yeah. I mean, Maybe not pure in the right, but the Judeo-Christian, you know, it was like you don't see a lot of like hardcore Judeo-Christian types like whooping it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe so. <laughs> yeah. So guys, let your hair down a little bit. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, suck it up when you had to suck it up, but yeah. relax and have fun. You know? Well, I think two people are so people are really worried nowadays with um with perception, with how other others perceive them, For you sure, know, yeah. and so I mean, I have a really loud laugh when you get me going. Um, and just today, we were we were in another panel, and Joe said something, and I, you know, had a huge guffaw, and he kind of looked over at me. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Uh, but you know, it's like I, the I, loud I, laughter always gets yeah, a few looks. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. <laughs> you know, I mean, what am I going to do? Be like he he he? No, I'm going to laugh. Control yourself. Yeah, Dr. but I think Spence. there's a lot of a lot of individuals individuals that feel really um, really restricted by that by their by their worry that they're going to be perceived a certain way that is fascinating <clears throat> so 
when you you do most of your work like in an office i do have you ever taken anyone like outside on an obstacle course as a therapeutic process or you know, you know we, we've had like some of the most unbelievable breakthroughs in just strange environments putting people in environments that are different i'm sure and uncomfortable like the ocean oh, <laughs> or yeah. you know long mountain hike and and our navy seal instructors even though they're not trained psychotherapists in a way they are because oh. they've put thousands and thousands of people through the totally. most physical mental training that might be an interesting thing to no, I've talk thought about, about that. as a Spartan mind doc is like, hey, Big time. maybe there is a seminar where you take people out in the obstacles, and <laughs> right? You have to face their fears and well, absolutely. That I be mean, fun? you know, I when I first um, when I came, first was sort of introduced to Spartan, um, I had never seen obviously a race before, and um, and when I went to one and. I just sort of like absorbed it. It was at the AT&T Cowboy Stadium, you know, this enormous stadium. Um, And everybody, you know, from where I was, it just like little ants kind of running around, (laughs) crawling over A-frames and crawling up ropes. But I thought to myself in that moment, like this is this is the physical embodiment of what I ask my clients to do all the time. Right, makes sense. And how wonderful or brilliant would that be? And how much faster might it might change be created? If you were to if you were to meld the two somehow, you yeah, know, if you were right. to bring the two together, um, and you know, I, I mean, since then, I mean, certainly in my office, I've 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 talked about Spartan and, and other things that really sort of get people outside of what they're comfortable with. Um, I feel like sometimes I have limitations because of really in so many ways our ethics board. You know, I mean, we we, oh, we can, can only do, do like so that? many things. We, really? we have to kind of have specific boundaries which you know you know it's that's what happens when you when you are under a license and under a a licensing board but but i do think that um that there's space for that i mean i think there's Mm -hmm. huge space for that because the container of the office is limited you know i'm only with Mm -hmm. a client 50 50 minutes a week that's Mm -hmm. nothing um and so if, if there's anything that I can do to sort of engage them outside of that in a way that takes the therapy with them, I, I certainly want to do. But it would be amazing to think about going out on an obstacle. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would just, I think, again, like it's just, it's not only metaphoric. I mean, the obstacles and the Spartan race are, you know, are certainly, you know, symbols, mm-hmm. right? Um, but they actually are experiences. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's really not just just a symbol. I mean, really, when you when you don't think you can climb a rope, and then you get up to the top and you ring that bell, mm-hmm. but that is more than a symbol. It's more than yeah, a symbol, that yeah. is an experience. I mean, that mm-hmm. is something. It's also a data point. Mm-hmm. It's also you know, two years later when they're struggling with something and they're like, oh gosh, but remember that time when I didn't think I could do the rope mm-hmm. and I did that and I rang that bell? Mm-hmm. How good that felt. I mean, th- those are the data points that we can come back. To. Mm-hmm. So I think it would be amazing to really create that 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 bridge. Yeah, that is cool. How do you stay mentally healthy and focused? What are your practices? Well, the first thing that I do um, is that I have sacred time. Mm-hmm. Um, I get up at four thirty in the morning. What? Um, yeah, good for you. Every morning. Um, even today, I was well, so yeah, even earlier because I didn't sleep well. But um, and I have me time. Um, and usually at home, what that looks like is I'll write for a little bit. Nice. Um, have some tea and breakfast uh, in a little. I call it my nook, mm-hmm. um, which is just this you know area by the kitchen. I, Where your husband can't find you. <laughs> he can, but the kids can't. <laughs> um, right. And I, you know, I open up the window. I mean, it's very ritualistic. Like yeah, at one point, great. even my I husband. I love morning rituals. By yeah, the way. my yeah. husband. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Accountant with Ben Affleck? Oh, yeah. And he like sets out the silverware. Right. My husband is like, I feel like we're moving into that territory. <laughs> um, but it is. It's ritualistic. But that's that starts my day off beautifully mm-hmm. because everything everything is just sort of in place and as it needs to be in that moment for me to start the day with an open space. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know things things get in the way sometimes. I mean, I feel like my you know my children are at this. <laughs> well, maybe every stage is this, but they're just not listening very well. You know, really? so <laughs> my son is nineteen. <laughs> So he's that stage does not go away. Yeah, I feel me. like it's not a stage. It's, it's not maybe really just a stage. being human. Permanent stage yeah. of being. 
<laughs> exactly. So there are those obstacles, right? Where they were like, you know, mom, can we come out yet? And I'm, nope, can't come past the <laughs> stairs. You got to go back. But but I do. I'm pretty sacred about it. From 4.30 to 5.45, you know, you. that is my time. Um, and then, so that's one thing. So really kind of creating a ritual um, or a practice around mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I have my non-negotiables. Mm-hmm. Um, movies are a non-negotiable for me. I have to have movies in my life. Mm-hmm. I have to, you know, thankfully I married somebody who feels the same. Any kind of movie or do you have a particular genre? You know, that, I, it, that's so Like funny. my wife won't let me watch anything that's, that has violence in it. Really? Which is fine. Right. It's great. Right. But I'm a Navy SEAL. Like yeah. I, I want to watch, you know, I want to watch the new James Bourne thing. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. James Bourne. What was that? What's the new one called? Uh, I don't know. Was it Jason Bourne, James Bond? Yeah, yeah, James yeah. Bourne. They, can, they yeah, combine they're it. They're the same two. person, aren't they? <laughs> Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. No, I saw that one. She did see that. But there's oh, a new TV series that Amazon oh, put out. Jack Ryan. Oh, Jack, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yep. Jack Ryan. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I can't I, watch it. Sorry, I haven't been able to watch Game of Thrones. We didn't make it past the first episode. Oh, really? I can't. I didn't watch Game of Thrones either. Really? No. Really? Yeah. People say it's amazing. Mm. But anyway, so we watch like lawyer shows, like Good Wife and Good Fight, and you do. They're terrific. Yeah, we have fun with them. Yeah, and we, we love like um, the masterpiece theater ones from oh, Britain. Oh yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fun. Well, really, I mean, some of some of the international shows are some of the best. There's yeah, a terrific. show on Netflix called Wentworth, which is like my favorite. Oh really? So oh. write that down, Wentworth. We're gonna check so out. We're good. always looking for the next thing. Oh my goodness, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nuts. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Navy I think- Seal. We trained. Let's check this out. So we trained the actors in the movie and the TV show Six. It's about SEAL Team Six. Like we trained them. We put them no through SEAL for training. Gave them the buds experience. They all talked about how cool it was. I haven't seen a single episode. What? I know. Oh my goodness. Because the only time I watch TV is with my wife. Got it's it. a ritual. Yeah. It's yeah. a fun ritual. Yeah. Three it or four is. times a week. You totally. Know? Yeah. I mean, my husband and I try and make, uh, you know, a, a weekly date night movie where we, right. you know, we go to the movies. Like a theater movie. Yeah. yeah. And we, you know, we've even, there are times when like nothing's out. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a struggle, but right. we go anyway, even if we're like, ah, I don't really want to see it. Do you want to see it? Sometimes you hit some really. surprising gems. Yeah. That way, and, huh? but, and it's also, it's just more. I mean, part of it is, you know, one of my other non-negotiables really is 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 having um, having time with my husband mm-hmm. that's separate from our children. Yeah, um, that's critical. Too. Yeah, I, I mean, that. I always, you know, I, I like to say that it's me first, and then it's my husband, and then it's our kids. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, because if you're not taking care of yourself, that's exactly then right. Then everything falls apart. If you're not care- taking care of the relationship, then not good for the kids. Yes, yeah, yeah, falls absolutely. apart for the kids. Um, and if those two are falling apart, you're not going to be able to take care of your clients. That's exactly right. Boom. So right. Start with yourself. So, you know, so so that so the movies for us really is another way to connect. That's cool. Um, like that. And so there's so there's ritual. There's non-negotiables. Um, and then there's values, um, and values to me are really important. And this is something that I do with my clients too: is is having them identify their values, um, and then making sure that they are in alignment with them. Yes. Um, yes. And I have to do that too in my own work. I had, I had an experience about a year and a half ago. Um, families is one of my values, um, but I had an experience where you know I was working at my private practice for like 35 hours a week and then I was also an executive director of a nonprofit at the same mm-hmm. time so mm-hmm. I'd work at my practice I'd come home immediately jump on the computer to do the nonprofit mm-hmm. work um, and you know the entire day would be absorbed with work and I had an evening where I had a new adolescent client come in with her family and we were doing an eval um, and one of the questions I like to ask is you know, do you have dinner together? Because to me, I feel like that that gives such rich information of how the yeah, family dynamic is. Yeah, you ask a question, is. then you're thinking, mm, when's the last time? <clears throat> That's exactly right. That's exactly what happened. You know, when I asked that question and they answered, you know, we try every night, I literally looked over at the clock and it was like 5.30. And my body had this sort of creepy, eerie sensation that I am not where I am meant to be. You're out of integrity. Yeah, I was totally out of integrity. Totally. Totally out of alignment. I've feeling many times. Yeah, and I went home that night and I said to my husband, something's got to change. Mm-hmm. Um, I resigned from the executive director position and then I even cut down my hours at my private practice. Good for you. Um, so that to me was important. But it's that. so, one of the things that I think is so key for, for people who 
who are aware of their values is there's you know it's more than just being aware of your values it's also aware of being like if I hadn't been checked in with myself right mm -hmm. in that moment if mm -hmm. I hadn't been in tune to what was going on mm -hmm. in my body then I might have glazed over that feeling you know of just course. sort of shifted yeah, in whatever. my chair right. and been like oh well, that was uncomfortable um, but so you have to be you have to be checked in. I mean, you have to mm -hmm. be connected mm -hmm. to your body. And I think, um, so I think for me that, that values piece is really important is, is constantly evaluating, you know, is this in alignment with, right. with my values? Even when Spartan <laughs> wanted to bring me on, I, you know, you was like, okay, yeah. is this, is this a company, mm -hmm. um, that is in alignment with my values? Yeah, um, you know, I talk about this a lot in my training because there's so many choices and so many yeah. options and so many people coming at us all the time saying, you know, can you help me with this? Or do you want to be part of that? Or, right. you know, and most people just say yes. Yeah. And my new favorite word is no. The more times you say no, the more times you're on target. That's so right. the <clears throat> no and on, you know, two simple letters. I like Learn that. to use them in both, you yeah. know, both configurations. Say no first in service to the bigger yes, so you can stay on target with what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And what you're supposed to be doing is that which is most in alignment with your purpose and something you're passionate about and your principles. And we call those the three P's. And mm, if, if you're not right in the center of those three, yeah. then there's something that's gonna be out of alignment. Right. Right? I love that. So if you're off with your purpose, then you're not gonna have any meaning with what you're doing. If you're right. off with your passion, you're gonna get burned out. And you're right. off with your principles, you're gonna be out of integrity. That's so true. And it's almost like a daily thing for me where I have to be of like, Of course. Okay, am I in alignment, right? Yeah. Have I said yes to things that are really gonna get me burned out, take me off target? Right. Or make me feel like, why am I doing this? Right, You know, Absolutely. I had to think about that with here, remember Jeff? And I was like, is it really in alignment for me even to come up to Lake Tahoe to do this podcast. And I'm like, you know, the podcast from a business standpoint, that's an alignment. Okay. Am I passionate about it? Absolutely. Yeah. I got that one. Right. Is in alignment with my principles? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to be helping people. Okay. Right. Check. Even there we though go. I had to say no to something else, I literally had something else scheduled this weekend. Right. And I had to go back to them and say, you know what? I'm sorry, that's not in alignment. Right. Well, I think too, I think what, what I love about a firm no is that it almost makes us available to other yeses that sure. we may not have ever seen. Yep. You know, um, I think... That's right. It's not like you've got a list of five things. Which yes am I going to say? And right. Oftentimes you say no, and then all of a sudden the things other happen. thing pops open for that's you. That's exactly right. Yeah, I, I mean, that. I think that's that sort of... You know, I, I, I love the idea that really we... We, we have to sort of close something off right. to make ourselves available to the next thing. I love that. Um, and I think sometimes people get so caught up in like, again, sort of this attachment to productivity and like just keep doing, 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 doing. And I think, you know, they forget that if they, if they have a firm no, then they can have a stronger yes later. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's so key in really making, making yourself available. And I think, I think so often people think that if they say no, then sometimes they're just going to go down this well, track. Well, they think people are going to judge them. That's exactly right. And that goes back to the, how right. are people going to perceive so me? So people have developed a codependence around <clears throat> saying yes. Yeah. And because they don't want to disappoint people. That's exactly right. And the real, you know, this is a great exercise if you're listening to this, which if you're listening, then you're obviously listening. <laughs> <laughs> is see how many no's you can collect today. Don't say yes to anything. Yeah. Even if you know it's the right thing, just say no, I'll get back to you. And then come back and say yes later. But see how many no's you can collect. That would be hard for me. <laughs> I know, right? I I'm just thinking like, about that. Even as, as you said that, I was like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Do I really have to do that? Yeah, do it. And if you want to be really, really challenged, do it for a week. Yeah, now, wow. Think about that. Just first of all, you'll be tracking how many times you're, rec you know, someone asks something of you. Right. And you'll be like, holy cow, there we are again. This is the 16th time today someone's asked something of me that I've had to say no to. Yeah. That's and, so true. And then, true. The, you know, more importantly, you're developing the muscle instead yes. of just reacting with a yes, reacting with a yes, right. with the codependence or whatever that reaction right. muscle is. You change that. Yeah. And so now you'll be like, hey, that's interesting. Right. Let me think about that. Right. Well, I love that <laughs> practice of of um, beginning to say things that are uncomfortable. You know, yes. I think thank you is another thing that people are often not. I mean, 
very good at saying in the sense that when a compliment is giving, right. you know, just say Accept the thank compliment. you. Right. right. And yeah, it might feel uncomfortable that first time, but the more you do it over and over again, yeah. you know, I think that there's such this concern of, oh, well, it's going to feel boastful or they're going to think I'm conceited if I say thank you instead of somehow like self deprecate, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, hate on myself. I in love that that. Moment. By the way, you are an exceptional therapist and psychologist. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Are you healed? Are, you, yeah. Are all you listeners healed out there? <laughs> um, yeah, why is it hard for us to accept a compliment? Oh, my goodness. Why is that? Well. Because I've noticed it, too, and I've had to teach myself to say thank you. Yeah, me too. And Because think about it this way, like from the giver's perspective. Right. You know, if someone said, hey, Mark, you, you really are doing a great job, or right. you're really helping a lot of people, and if I say, oh, that's nothing. Basically, I'm telling you, you don't matter. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, yep. I love that you said that because I think, I think we, I mean, we just get so stuck in the eye. I said this this morning, actually, on a panel that I think um, illness begins in the eye and wellness right. begins in the we. Oh, cool. Um, I love that. And I think, you know, when somebody is, is, is giving us something and we don't receive it, you know, I, I was literally just walking it out on the, whatever this is called, the Olympic Village. And somebody walked by and said, hey, great talk today. Um, and I just, you know, said, thank you. And it felt so good. But I can also bet that it felt good to that person. Right. As opposed to me saying, they were like, validated. like, exactly, yeah, exactly. It was a great talk. Right. As opposed, you know, if I were to say, like, oh, gosh, really? Yeah, I was really off today. Yeah. Then they would have been like, oh, okay. I'm yeah, going to go man, get some what pizza. What was wrong with me? Because yeah. it sounded really good. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, totally. Exactly. I mean, when we give ourselves permission to shine, um, we give other people permission to do the same. I mean, when we give ourselves permission to to say thank you and have gratitude and receive, yeah, yeah. that's contagious. You know what another really good one is? I learned this from um, Matthew and Tercy's, um Engelhart, who run Cafe Gratitude. Mm. And they have um, a communication seminar that they run once a year. Mm -hmm. And it's in Hawaii in January. And I'm going for the second time. And my stepdaughter, Catherine, is not fourth time. She's the one that dragged us. Wow. But anyways, um, they've got see, the, these, it's all about communication. And one of, one of their things is just what we were talking about before, is collecting no's. Another one is um, this idea that you just go up to people or you know, people you just randomly meet and just ask them what they're grateful for. Oh, I love to, that. To immediately change yep. the energy of the relationship between two human beings who randomly meet. Yep. And it's hard at first. You know, like, I'll go to the checkout counter, you know, if I'm buying some whatever at yep. the grocery store. Um, and I'll say, my inclination isn't to say, what are you grateful for today? No. But I, I'll easily say, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah. And then they'll give me some random answer. But if I say, what are you grateful for? They literally pause and they think about it. And they're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for this job. Or I'm... I'm grateful that. that you asked me that. Right. Right. You just got me out of my head. I was I love enough, that. you know, something like that. And yeah. It's a I mean, really cool practice. That's awesome. I, I also, um, I think about how much more interesting our conversations would be if right. we shifted away from the question. So tell me what you do to, so tell me what you value. Yeah. Like, can I, you, I never ask people what they do. <laughs> like, I love that. I'd love to find out through a conversation, though. Right. But right, right, exactly. It's such a formulaic thing. It is. It is. Well, and when I people ask me that, I don't even know what to say anymore, either. <laughs> Just crack it up. I'm like, I don't know what I do. What well, do you, I do? You know, Jeff? what you can say is, I can't really tell you what I do, but I can tell you what I value. Oh, I love that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I feel like, um, and again, it's sort of, it, when we ask that question, and I'm, I'm totally at fault for it, I probably asked it five times this morning, but um, we sort of perpetuate this idea that we're defined by what we do. Yeah, doing, you know? doing, doing. Right, exactly. So instead of moving How away How are you going to be today? How are you going to be today? That's a great one. Yeah. I love that. I want to be cool. Totally. I want to be on point. I want to be me. Badass. Badass. Yeah, I think that would be my answer today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Maybe every day. <laughs> I hope we can swear. Sure. Go for it. So are you going to run the race this weekend? 
You know, it's so funny, actually. I would love to run the race. I didn't sign up for it, but... Mm. um, Do you have to sign up for it if you work for Spartan, or can you, like, just jump on the course? Well, I I didn't really know, so I secretly brought all of my stuff. (laughs) Um, And then, actually, Nicole, who's, like, Spartan staff and does a lot of work with Spartan, um, she just asked me. She said, are you racing? And I said, no. She said, do you want to? And I said, yes, I would love to. So I actually might. Oh, good for Um, you. I know. I mean, the, the issue is I leave, you know, there's issues with when I leave and all that kind of stuff so I might if I had to I might have to do it tomorrow and apparently they're sold out but who knows so but I would love if to. you do he um he you know Joe the he the big he, he. might have a poll no he might have you stop and do like a podcast in the middle of the race I would love that <laughs> oh my gosh I would Wouldn't totally love that just At the top of the rope <laughs> right. right before <laughs> here I am Dr. Pence I'm on the rope <laughs> yeah no I mean I would lo- I would I'm love experiencing to a little fear it. right now <laughs> <laughs> I can't really breathe <laughs> So what do we do? Box breathing. Yeah. Box breathe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would love to. I've, I've, we raised, my husband and I raced last weekend in Nashville and I mean, I just, I have caught the bug. Totally caught You know, the bug. I, I met Joe early in the Spartan years and I was up at his uh, ran, or farm, I guess, in Vermont. Uh-huh. And um, it was the weekend where we were evaluating what to do for a certification program. I spent a whole weekend with him with a bunch of other people and we actually ran a, a batch of people through the first certification program wow and um we didn't certify any of them <laughs> clearly successful <laughs> it was a big success <laughs> huge success but it was a blast and we were up for 48 hours and joe was so much fun and that that farm up there is beautiful but I, it's neat for me to see joe's progression like he's exploded yeah it's pretty great it's spark with a lot of help obviously he'll say he right. had nothing to do with it and um, it's neat to see Spartan Race have a worldwide attention and become a sport and be sponsored by Reebok. And yeah. So almost the same thing I saw blow up with CrossFit. And I was friends with the CrossFit founder, Greg Glassman, who was a really interesting guy, too. So you're like Dumbo's Feather. Yeah, I've been there. My, my company is about the same size as it's always been. <laughs> Everyone else is blowing up around me. I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> no. See, what you're doing. No, this is great. You're not doing anything wrong. You're, you are, whatever it is that you're doing is contagious and people are making it grow. I mean, you're Dumbo's Feather. You know, in Dumbo, it's like he couldn't fly until he got the feather. It's like, you know, people are struggling until they get marked fine. I like that. Yeah. I think there's a compliment in there, and I'm going to say thank you. Yeah, there definitely is. Yeah, <laughs> might be hard to find. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, just pointing to his watch. Is there something you want to tell me about your watch? <laughs> I think he's telling it's poor out of town. It's broken. Mm-hmm. Your watch is broken. I can help you with that. Maybe his Christmas bonus or something. Hey, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I like yeah, it. we could do this all day long. Oh, my goodness. You yeah. rock. Well, thank you. You are so much fun. I love doing I want to connect with you again. I want to, maybe you can come to our summit. We have uh, this cool yeah. summit. Yeah, you talked about that. Yeah, it's in December. Is that when it is? When November is it? 29th to December 2nd. The weekend after Thanksgiving? Yeah. Very cool. And, That's about and the- or we're doing a ton, a ton of work now with Unbeatable Mind. I don't know. I just see that there's. I love that. I don't want to make you say yes or no to anything right now. But well, it'd be you, fun to follow up and see where we can Well, connect. so here's the other thing. Or I'm you like, could collect your first now. No, I don't want to collect you my first now. You just collected them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I want, well, I want to circle back about the collecting those, though. Um, I also want to say that we, ha- we also have to, we sometimes have to say yes when we want to say no. You know, mm-hmm, like with, with, um, with this whole journey that I've been on with Spartan and everything that's happened since, it all came from just a, why the fuck not? Yeah. You know, let's just do it. The heck. Yeah. It's like you hadn't been planning and thinking about Spartan no, for years. It I just hadn't, popped I, in I your, did not even know about it. Probably because you said no to all those other things. Well, that's exactly why I think it was. And then Because it was, it was wrapping yes. up right after I left that position. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it, it was like things were just... I was at this point literally in my career where I was like, I need something else. I need something else. And then weeks later, I got this random phone call. And then it started this journey. Huh. I mean, it's just it, when you, That's cool. when you, I mean, I feel like I kind of manifested it a mm-hmm, little bit, sure. but you have to be available to that. And then you have to say yes. So I'm going to say yes to Unbeatable Mind. You will not be my first no. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Jeff, write that down. Make sure we get, make sure. <laughs> It's True. on we record. We have on record. Yes. We're doing something. Record. I don't know what it is yet. It's be, awesome. I love it. We have what to be open to, to what that is. I'll yeah. think about it. 
That'd well, be cool. Yeah. Something. So, thanks for joining me today. This has been super fun. It's been awesome. And, you know, really Thank valuable. You for me. And um, <clears throat> if people want to connect with you or learn more about what you're doing, is there? Yeah. So you can. My away? website is just www.drlarapence.com. Okay. My contact info is Lara on there. Lara spelled L-A-R-A. That's right. L-A-R-A. Um, okay. My contact info is on there. I'm fairly, you know. And what about the Spartan Mind? Podcast. So right, so the Spartan Mind podcast um, is every Wednesdays. We roll it out on YouTube. It's on iTunes. You can find it on Spotify. Anywhere that you can, you know, find the other Spartan Up podcasts that they do on Tuesdays. Um, so it's every Wednesday. We're really in so many ways. I'm bringing you back to the couch. Joe likes to get people off the couch, mm-hmm. but I tell Joe that in order to get them off, so he's the yang and you're the yin. That's exactly right. We got to like spend that. a little bit of time on it first. So um, and they're you know super digestible just three minute um oh, cool. episodes sure. where really you can kind of take in anything from you know flipping failure upside down to how we pivot is it just you chatting just to the camera me. yep okay yep just me chatting with the camera um we give you know we we encourage particular steps you know so mm-hmm. a lot of times there's like three things i want you to think about that mm-hmm. kind of thing so mm-hmm. it's it's takeaways um concrete things to do at home and but people can find this at unbeatablemind.com g- sure <laughs> <laughs> can they i don't know maybe <laughs> this sounds fantastic <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe we'll link to it. <laughs> I like it. I like the idea. I, like I don't it. know what Joe would think about that idea. Yeah, you, I mean, YouTube, for sure, if you subscribe to Spartan Up. Um, and then make sure, a lot of people don't know this, but when you subscribe to a podcast on YouTube, you have to click the alarm. Like, there's a little alarm symbol, and that gives you indication. That lets you know when there's a new episode. Because you oh, know, I didn't if, know yeah, that. That's so, very exactly. alarming. I, I didn't, didn't know, know it that. either. But um, my husband told me, he's like, you've got to make sure to tell people to click the alarm thing. So... Um, so yeah, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Spartan Mind. Spartan Mind. Awesome. Thank you. have you. a Spartan Mind. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. And um, oh, that was awesome. Awesome. I hope you think so too, you listener or watcher. <laughs> this has been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so has, it very been a, formal. has it been a long day for you? <laughs> <laughs> starting to be a long day. But this isn't the weirdest I've been by any stretch of the imagination. So um, thanks for listening, folks. You guys rock. I really appreciate your support. Stay focused. Do your daily work. And I'll see you next time on the Unbeal Mind Podcast. Hoo-yah. Divine out. Hey, this is Mark Divine. Thanks very much for watching the Unbeatable Mind podcast on YouTube. You can also find the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, and unbeatablemind.com slash podcast. Be sure to check out the new episode released every week. Hoo-yah.